You're watching clips, the best moments from our live streams every Monday and Friday. Don't miss out. Watch it. Favreau speaks with Iger regarding Gina Carano. Okay, so so let me give you context here. Let's so this it. is from uh, from uh, my uh, contact inside of uh, Lucasfilm slash Disney, who I've come to trust. Who not everyone has trusted, but over time, most of their reports have come out uh, to be true, uh, even when a lot of people didn't believe them, and sometimes it took months or even over a year before some of mm -hmm. what they said was proven right. So so this is my contact inside uh, Lucasfilm, and you know I leave them alone. I don't bother them. They come to me when they want to come to me or when they feel they have information, and they generally don't come to me unless they've seen the information with their own eyes, they've heard it from somebody within the system that they trust, uh, or or, or they say this is a widespread rumor and I report it as such, right? So this is what they're telling me. So basically, if you, if you want to read some of it, you can. Um, uh, Paul, if you want to. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So our favorite Disney insider, uh, Sparrow, come up today, has, co has come, come in today with some very interesting news regarding Gina Carano's future with Star Wars and how Jon Favreau is maneuvering behind the scenes to bring her back if he can. If he can. First, yeah. First, Sparrow confirms that filming has begun on the Mandalorian movie but that John has scheduled production to leave certain scenes until late in the process. And this is highlighted. Our source believes that this is being intentionally done to give John time to get Gina back in for filming, assuming that her case gets resolved in the filmmaking process and she agrees to come back. So, 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 let, so, let, so let me... Can that even happen? Does that make sense? Well, I mean... Matthew, I want to hear your perspective on this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, there have been people. There are people on my Patreon that say she's never going to come back. She just wants to win her, wants to win her case at court. I, I don't agree with that opinion. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's right. I don't agree with it because I mm -hmm. think she made her case in her filings, which is she. What is she asking for? She's asking for her job back. So she says in the mm -hmm. filing. Give me my job back. That's the remedy she's asking for, right? And so if they gave her a job back, then the lawsuit goes away. That's the remedy. She's not asking for $100 million. She's asking like 75 k which is the sort of minimum needed for, for federal court, right, just to get it in, right? But her thing is, I want my job back. That's what she said. And, you know, just on a practical level, this is a very ambitious, talented woman who was getting a pretty fast rise as an actress, until this drama happened and she's been kind of knocked down. I mean, sadly, uh, you know, she's been working for Daily Wire and some some smaller productions. She can do much bigger than that, but it hasn't really come her way because she got kind of blacklisted by the system because of these events. So it makes sense that she would want her career back, uh, you know, and again, we'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I, I mean, I've only had a few DM exchanges with the, with the lady on, on Instagram. I don't claim to call her a friend or know her well, but she's been very polite in the one or two DM exchanges we've had. She's a very nice person. I uh, can't claim to read what's in her mind. Uh, but I'm just saying that someone who works in this industry, who knows fellow creative people and just normal human beings, if you're given a chance, if, if they were to come back and say, you know what, you can have your job back as Cara Dune. You know, we'll just put her, move on. She doesn't need no apology. That's the apology. That's the apology. Because that will shake up Hollywood. That will shake up everyone that labeled her as an anti-Semite and all these horrible labels that you can't survive in Hollywood, right? Just getting her job back ends that. And then others are going to be like, hey, you know, I got this project at Warner Brothers. Hey, you know, Cavill will be like, hey, you know, Warhammer. You know, remember, how you, I think they used to date, right? We want to come into Warhammer. Right now, nobody can do that because she has this cloud of this, of this ugly accusation on her, which getting her job back ends so that's my perspective again i'm not speaking for her i don't know what's in her head i'm just using what i think a normal human being would want based on what she a position she's in so matthew you have some thoughts on this yeah i do um you know this lawsuit it's still a couple years out right like at mm -hmm. least three years mm -hmm. uh, before it hits a court and um obviously mandalorian and grogu is going to go into production before that mm -hmm. um and I also like we we talked about this uh, with Polly on Saturday's show, on the Salty Nerd channel, and it was basically like, would if, if uh, Lucasfilm decided to hire Gina back, would she actually want to work for a company that had treated her so badly in the past? And so I, I feel like there are a couple things going on here that um, kind of like need to be factored mm -hmm. into like what could potentially happen. Uh, you, you know, the first of which is is that I think she wants more than just her job back. I think she wants a public apology. I think she wants to expose like the people behind the scenes who did this to her. But from Elon's perspective, and he's the guy who's, who's bankrolling this, I think he wants to send a message that, you know, companies or studios or whatever can't get away with canceling people for what they say online. And so I, I think that there's a few more factors that go into it than just, you know, her appearing in the Mandalorian Grogu and, and all is forgiven because I, I feel like 
not only is she fighting for herself, but she's fighting for other people mm. who could potentially be harmed by this bad behavior by studios or by executives or people behind the scenes. And I think we all know on this panel, at least, that Pablo mm. Hildago was really the, the person behind the scenes who was pushing to kind of like get Gina canceled, right? Like that's the name that just keeps popping up with all the insiders I talk to and stuff like that. So I, I feel like th there's more to it than just like her getting, a, a, you know, back in Disney's good graces. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see how she could comfortably work for a company that like basically destroyed her career. Mm. Um, so I, I feel like those are a bunch of things that need to be factored into the potential. Oh, so so, so let me let me give, scenario. Let, well, let me give some perspective. I think everything Matthew is saying is fair okay, uh, good. and reasonable. Uh, I don't fully agree with it, uh, and we've already stated where I do believe if she's offered a job back, I would, as her counselors, or <laughs> I would like just take it, right? Because that is the apology. In Hollywood, you don't get better than that. You know, when 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 uh, when Scott O'Hara settled with uh, with uh, Bob Chapek, there wasn't an apology. It was you know Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Scarlett Johansson, if you remember, that she had sued over how Black Widow was handled, right? And she yep. and they just gave her what she wanted. That was a settlement. This is the money you want. You got it. And we want all. And they announce a lovely thing, how much they like her, and they do other projects together. That's all. That, that, that's all they needed to say. In this industry, apologies uh, are not given because it is considered loss of face. I've never seen one. I've never seen one. I've never seen anyone apologize because it's considered loss of face and, and it's bad form to ask for one. The act, the money and the action is the apology. I've just never seen anything. But I can't speak for whether she feels compelled to work for other people. I think just getting her back in is the victory because it's defeated the system. And again, I can't speak for Mr. Elon Musk because I, I have some very ugly opinions of Mr. Musk because number one, he won't let me back on Twitter without explanation. Even his new regime of, of, of allegedly mm. woke people. I mean, before I would send them like every month, can you reconsider my case? And they would respond saying that we've looked at it again and we can't let you back on for unknown reasons. Then after Elon came on, I just got one quick response saying, stop bothering us. It was literally that. It was like, we're never going to give it to you. This was Elon's oh. people. They literally, wow. I, I still had the email. Twitter response, do not ask us again. This wasn't the old guard. So that's Elon. And number one, as someone who's very pro-Palestinian, I'm seeing pro-Palestinian voices shut down by Elon Musk, who's very clearly on the opposite side of that argument and won't let people speak, speak about it. Uh, you know, And so I don't have any respect for the man. I don't believe he stands for these values. I think a lot of people want him to believe that. I personally experience, and people that share certain beliefs that I have, have personally experienced that he doesn't support those things. And his limit of free speech is whatever he cares about. So I don't, I, I mean, Ms. Cronin can do whatever she wants. I think trying to fight Elon's battle ain't wise business, in my opinion. So on this, Matthew and I don't don't see eye to eye. We'll see what happens. He, Matthew could be proven right. She may be given an offer, and she may say a uh, settlement offer, and she may say, no, I want a public apology. I want this. But with regard to Lucasfilm, she ain't going to come back as long as certain people are there, like Miss Kennedy. She ain't going to come back. Let me continue. And, 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 and what, 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 re real quick, uh, what's mm -hmm. interesting yeah. about that, Cameron, is yes. that this lawsuit has the potential to take down Kathleen Kennedy because in discovery, we can, we could see like, you know, her emails, her internal communications, what she knew when she knew it and what decisions that she ultimately made. And if it, if she's exposed as a bad actor in this, that could be the catalyst of her dismissal. And so like there, there's that to consider as well. But I do think that um, when it comes to this lawsuit, like you, you mentioned Scarlett Johansson, I mean, that came down to basically a, a financial dispute mm -hmm. over like how much money that she was owed by the studio. This is different in the sense that Gina was personally wronged and defamed and slandered in the mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. And, and her entire career was, was destroyed because of the, this false al allegation, which is actually very hypocritical by Lucasfilm because mm -hmm. lots of other Lucasfilm actors can freely spout their political beliefs. Yeah, and they can reference and World War II yeah. events to exactly. analogize their beliefs. Sure. Exactly. And so I, I feel like Gina wants more than just her job back at this point. I, I feel like if anyone is positioned to, to break the studio and get them to publicly apologize for what actually mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm they're in a unique position to do it because if in discovery they learn about some bad actors, they could threaten to go public with that stuff if they don't agree sure, to so that's, apologize. That's the leverage. But again, the specific people that canceled her or the excuse they used to cancel her is the red line issue, the Holocaust in Hollywood. Once you put, once that issue is brought in there, it's a red line. So to publicly apologize and say, uh, you know, that will bring the ire of certain people for whom that is a very useful tool to advance. Uh, so. Know,